So how does this how does this view of right then connect to the issue of abortion? Why is it that a that a that a fetus doesn't have rights? I think before we turn to that question, it's we should get another issue on the table, but particularly if we're going to get um, the objectivist approach here, and it relates to the pursuit of happiness, because because there's a way in which all the discussions of abortion are, we want to either prevent it, outlaw it, or regulate it almost out of existence, and it's like that's taken as that's the moral position and now defend why you should be able to uh, abort in this context or this such and it's oh well the life of the mother is threatened or it was rape and so and i think that's completely the wrong way to look at it that and if, if we connect it to the issue of the pursuit of happiness part of the whole enlightenment project and i think this th this is one of the central aspects that rand respects admires and builds on. She often quotes um, the, the Francis Bacon, nature to be commanded must be obeyed. And that what you get in the enlightenment is this, we're gonna transform the world. Um, it, you have to do, it's, you're not given values, you have to create them and you have to do a massive transformation and you have to take control of your life. And it's easy to think in the 21st century that human beings always had control over the realms of sex and procreation. Yeah. And <laughs> I mean, if you know anything about history, it is just not true. It's a massive achievement. I, I, I think one of the greatest um, inventions in the 20th century is birth control yeah. more widely and the pill um, more, more specifically. And but if you're looking at it from the context that sex is an enormous value, it's experienced as an end in itself, as something you do for its own sake. And the threat of, well, you might get pregnant, it might lead to kids that we don't want. So that's always been a problem. And, and that you have kids when you don't want, or you have too many kids, or, or even that you're, you're having trouble conceiving. And it's just, that's sort of your fate in life the control we now have over procreation and then so the ability to engage in sex as an end in itself without any kind of worry or threat mm -hmm. that is such an enormous achievement an enormous value that human beings for i mean pre the 19th 20th century never had never enjoyed and that's so there's a there's a real positive of having that kind of control over your life of having deciding if you want kids when you want them how many kids you want and th that birth control abortion all these things are aspects of having this kind of control so there's a real positive here that so it's not i'm pro abortion in the yeah, sense i'm pro people having this kind of control over their life and then, and then being able to enjoy a sex life as an end in itself. And so when there's laws being proposed or passed that interfere with this freedom, I view it as an enormous negative, not there's something sort of embarrassing here that you have to defend because it's like, like hardcore pornography. I, Ayn Rand said, yeah, I'm for free speech. I'm going to defend this. But I'm not, I don't watch hardcore por pornography. And so abortion is not at all like that. Um, and that's the context, I think, to think then of like, why is this part of a, a, a woman's freedom? And why is a fetus doesn't have rights? And, and I find it interesting that a lot of times, that, uh, at least in my chat, a lot of times when you talk about abortion, it does boil down to this, well, uh, this promiscuous sex, you know, and in, in people who have promiscuous sex get pregnant, they should suffer the consequences of their actions. And it's, it, there is this very, I think at the end of the day, Christian view of, of, of sex and, and what sex entails and what sex is okay and what sex is not, that permeates the, the, yeah. the, uh, the abortion debate. It's not just about, it's not maybe even at all about uh, the fetus. It's 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 what really bugs them is the freedom 
to have to have sex and and not to worry about it and that there are remedies to if something neg you know some something it, it happens that is negative like a like a unwanted pregnancy yeah and i view it it's in the opposite in the sense of instead of saying okay the condom didn't work or what the contraception didn't work and you want to have an abortion now rather than saying okay you have to now live with your decision this is taking responsibility of someone thinking or a couple thinking no we're not ready for kids now we're too young or we're not in the right financial position or we just don't want kids they're taking responsibility and that's what's being taken away from them if abortion is off the table. It's one form in which they take responsibility for their sex life and for whether they should have children or not. And it, the idea that you take that away from them and in, in the name of personal responsibility, I think is it, that it's the opposite of the truth of what has happened. Or in the name of the pursuit of happiness of yeah. a, a potential an, a potential human being and not a real human being. So you, you're denying them choice you're denying them responsibility you're denying them the options in the name of something that's not yet real and yeah. it's uh it, it but it but it, the anti-sex was new to me I, I didn't realize the extent to which it goes that there's this they won't say it's anti-sex they'll never admit that it's anti-sex but their attitude towards it is well i mean if you have sex it you know you should suffer the consequences if there's bad out really I mean, that's a really weird attitude towards, uh, uh, towards sex. And it's, it is, I mean, this was Ayn Rand's view of the Christianity's um, emphasis on abortion and more generally trying to outlaw contraception, saying the, the only form that's proper is the rhythm method. Um, it's all the it, input terror into sex and so that it's not experienced as an end in itself and if you take the christian view seriously that you don't really count you're supposed to be on your knees oriented towards god so the sex is it's not that sex is an orientation towards yourself towards your own life happiness pleasure it's not a means to some other thing but if that's the whole morally that's what you're supposed to do you can see why they would be really really anti-sex because it's it's the of the a major major form in which you experience your life as an end in itself and that's exactly what philosophically they're at war with yeah and and it, you know even the old testament is filled with the idea that that the purpose of sex is procreation there's no there's no purpose beyond that it's procreation and and it's it's very anti even uh, masturbation because it's a waste. It's wa and it, and at the end of the day, it's pleasure, and they're and they're yeah. against that. So there's there's a whole line through religion, the judo so-called judo Christian tradition, of being uh, of being anti-sex, anti-pleasure, and creating. And I think what what happens when you take away abortion is you create now a cloud over the sexual act of stress, of worry, uh, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. Yeah. So in that context, that, that there's an enormous positive here that's being attacked. Yes. I think then when you think of the issue of rights, and if you take seriously the whole view that rights, the fundamental right is a right to life, which means to your own life, to live it and to enjoy it. And the pursuit of happiness is emphasizing that it, it is for, your, for yourself here on earth, for your happiness, pleasure, enjoyment, fulfillment. And if you take that seriously, what the whole perspective is, is you have independent beings trying to figure out in a social organization, how can we make the, it, a, an organization in which each of us can be pursuing our own happiness mm -hmm. and yet still interact and when we think it's it's profitable to interact with other people, we're able to do that. And when we think it's not, we're able to go our separate ways. But the whole perspective is you're dealing with individual separate entities, each who should be. They might default on this and they might um, not put the effort or the thought into it, but who should be pursuing their own lives and happiness. And 
and then rights are principles you formulate to say, okay, society has to respect everyone's life, their ability to think for themselves, to earn and keep the property they produce, and to pursue their own happiness. It's fundamentally, um, it's you're projecting adult human beings, yep. figuring out how to interact socially in a way that would be uh, at least possibly beneficial to all of them. That is, if they think about their lives and so on, everyone can pursue and enjoy their life and happiness. And the when you're talking about a fetus, or even before a fetus, an embryo, um, you're not talking that there, there's nothing like an independent being that would be thinking about the pursuit of its life and happiness. It doesn't have a life yet. It is a part of dependent on mm -hmm. biologically, physically, philosophically, you would say metaphysically, it's a dependent on the mother. And that it's not a separate being and it doesn't have rights. It's more plausible to grant rights to animals that are independent things than it is to, to uh, embryo. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual would be any man or woman who is willing to think meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at youronbrookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for all for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>